Hi guys, welcome back to the podcast. This is the first podcast of the new year, so happy new year. I know we're now already half, over halfway through January, so it doesn't really feel like the new year anymore, but welcome. Today is Wednesday the 16th of January, and uh, yeah, I want to say thank you everyone for coming back. If you are coming back, and if you're new, thank you so much for checking me out. You're all welcome here. I hope we, uh, and you, have a have had a really good start of the year. I realised that last sentence just made no sense. I wanted to say, I hope you've all had a lovely start to the year. Um, our month has been absolutely hectic. It has been so busy. This is the first opportunity I've had to sit down and do a podcast and I have so much to share with you. This is gonna be a pretty long one, I imagine, but I'm gonna try and not go too far off topic when I'm talking. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's been really busy. Both Perry and I are going to be in New York next week. Perry's actually going to be in New York a little bit longer than I am, so he leaves a few days before me and gets back a few days after me. But um, so we've both been really busy preparing for this trip. He he is going for a work, um, it's work purpose his trip, and it's something that it's actually quite a big deal for him. It's something he's been preparing for for a while, so it's now all coming to a head, and he's just got a lot of work to do in preparation for this trip. So he's been really busy working a lot of late nights because, I mean, not super late, but working most, most evenings. And I've been busy preparing for these classes that I'm teaching at Vogue next week and um, more about that later. And uh, and yeah, so we've both just been extre extremely busy. And then on top of that, um, trying to uh, not stress out too much about the fact that we're leaving Layla behind for this trip. Um, it's for the best, to be quite honest. Um, it means we can both focus on what we need to focus on and um, my mum will be coming to stay with her and watch her and like take her to nursery and all that sort of do all of her usual things um, and it's less disruptive for her because she'll still be in her own house um, with her own routine and doing her usual things um, so it's just less stressful for everybody if she stays here but obviously I'm feeling quite anxious because neither me nor Perry are going to be here when um, at, during that time that I'm away um, anyway, I'm babbling now. It's exactly what I wanted to avoid. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to say welcome. Um, I don't even know if I introduced myself. My name's Mina. <laughs> welcome to the Knitting Accept podcast channel. Um, this is episode 131, the first one for 2019. Um, I just realised I'm not quite centre in the frame, so sorry about that. This might be... I hope it's not too off-putting. Our living room is, an in, is a bit of a tip right now. Thankfully, you can't see too much of how much of a mess this is because, um, again, if you've been watching a while, you'll know, but we um, used to live in New York. So when we moved back from New York to the UK, we weren't sure if we were going back a few months after or not. So we left most of our things um, in storage in New York, things that we were going, going to keep, like personal belongings. And then when it became apparent that we were definitely not staying uh we sold most of our furniture well, all the furniture and um a lot of things that we didn't want to keep and everything else we've had shipped back and it all arrived yesterday morning so we are now once again surrounded by boxes and lots of things that we now have to find space for and places to put them so um i think we're gonna have another bit of a cull we now have duplicates of some things that we obviously had to get because we couldn't wait um so we have a few things that we have duplicates of and some things that we just don't need anymore. Um, and I'm looking behind the camera is a few boxes stacked up of all of my craft supplies, knitting, sewing, other things, crafty work, craft related, um, that are behind the camera. And I'm thinking, that's a lot of stuff. I don't know what I'm gonna, where I'm gonna put all of it. So I think I'm gonna have to go through and have a bit of a cull, de-stash um, of a lot of things including possibly some finished objects. Um, just some that I don't get to wear because I have so many things that I've finished. I'm gonna look to see which ones I can gift to family and friends and others I might um, I might see if anyone's interested in purchasing them as like a do stash and stuff. And we'll see. I haven't decided yet. I still need to go through everything. Um, I think whatever I decide to do, I'll anything I wanna maybe potentially pass on or de stash. I'll set aside and um, let family and stuff have first dibs on it, I guess, essentially, if anyone wants any of it, before deciding um, whether or not to try and sell it. So we'll see. There's some ramblings, which again, I was trying to avoid. 
<laughs> okay um, so places you can find me online you can find me i've got my notes on my phone again so apologies if i look down um you can find me online as knitting expat on instagram you can find me as mina philip on ravelry and i sell knitting designs on ravelry as knitting expat designs and there'll be links to all of that below this video in the show notes and i will have show notes below this video for you guys um I've decided to keep them on YouTube now just because it's easier for me and it just makes the most sense because you can just scroll down while you're still watching the video and read the comments and uh, read the description and see the show notes. So, um, so yeah, I've, I have, I'm surrounded by stuff on this table. So let's jump right in. I have quite a few recently released patterns or pattern related news to share with you. Uh, first off, we have all the patterns from last year's sock club are now available for general purchase. You can p buy them individually or as part of um, the ebook that they come in. Um, so there are 12 patterns now, but one club was the Wanderlust Sock Club and there's six patterns in that. And then you've got the Cozy Sock Club, which has another six patterns in that. And both of those clubs came with a free pattern as well, which were the, um, uh, Mistletoe Kisses socks, which is also available on its own. But if you purchase the clubs, you get that one for free. So there's that. Um, then this year's Sock Club started on the 1st of January and it's only a four month club. And so the first pattern for that is the Winter Gansey socks. And I knit these out of, the yarn is by Knitting It Up on her um, Hampton base, I want to say. It's her MCN base. And it's just a really fun, it's almost like a pick your own texture pattern. So it starts out with this really fun um, sort of play on a mistake rib. And then you have sections of different textures that you can mix and match. So I think there are four or five different texture patterns um, that I've included in the pattern. And then you can just sort of mix and match them, knit, knit each section for as long as you want. Um, I've given the sample, I've, I've given the mix of textures and how many repeats I did of each for how I knit the sample socks, these socks. But obviously you can just mix it up and make it your own, do it however you'd like. And that's part of the fun with this pattern is that it's so customizable to be what you want. And I've really been enjoying seeing your guys' um, uh, interpretations popping up on Instagram and in the group. Um, so these are the winter Gansey socks and they're called Gansey's because the winter Gansey's because, um, well, the color kind of felt quite wintry and also the, the pattern is inspired by traditional Gansey style patterning. Um, then next up in terms of announcements, let me see what else. Um, there was the, the far and wide shawl. Now I can't remember if that pattern has had already been released the last time I podcast or not, but it was a shawl I designed out of loop fiber studios, um, yarn. And so that's now available for general purchase. <clears throat> and you can see the original sample at Vogue Knitting Live. Um, not this weekend, next weekend, um, as I'll be taking it over for Steph, who's going to have it in her um, in her booth. Then, um, and then we have the waffle sweater, which is the one I'm wearing. This is one I designed out of Primrose Yarn Company on her Margot base, uh, which is an MCN fingering weight. It's 150 gram skein, so you get really big cakes out of it. Um, and yeah, so I use this sort of gradient not really a true gradient but this sort of color progression of colors um for this one and it's got it's a textured front and the back is in stockinette the neckline shaping is actually the same on the front and the back and so you can wear the um you can wear the top reversed as well so with the stockinette being on the front if you wish um it's just a, it's a nice uh, really simple drop shoulder um construction really sort of boxy and oversized and i like it with the slightly longer sleeves i did slightly longer sleeves for myself you can obviously the sleeves are very customizable you knit them as long as you want um and that's very simple but um but yeah i really really enjoyed knitting this one and because i designed this specifically to be released at Vogue knitting live um next week when i'll be there um kelsey who is the main dyer behind primrose young company she's asked myself and a few and a handful of other dyers not dyers, designers to design patterns for um for her using her yarn 
at um, for Vogue Knitting Live. Uh, now I did ask if she'd mind if I released it a little bit early just because I didn't want to have to deal with trying to publish a pattern whilst I was away. Um, and she said that would be fine. So this pattern will be published this Friday. So a week before Vogue Knitting Live. So this Friday, which will be the 18th, I believe. Yeah, Friday the 18th of January, this pattern will be released. And um, and yeah, and Kelsey's going to be having pre-orders going up on the 25th of January, which is the first day of Vogue Knitting Live. Um, she's going to have pre-orders going up on her website for... Uh, yarn for this pattern so I will leave a link to the Primrose Yarn Company website as well down below for you guys um, so that's exciting and the last bit of pattern news this is the most recent thing that I've released up until now is um, this hat this is the London Bee Ridge hat which is the same sort of pattern as the socks that I published last year and the fun thing about this and you can't really tell because of the bobble on it at the moment but it has this really fun sort of crown shaping this star shaped crown shaping which I really like and a lot of you seem to have liked uh, seem to like because it, I've been getting a lot of comments about it on Instagram so yeah sorry about my voice I don't know why it's been a bit hoarse and dry this morning um, <clears throat> nothing seems to be helping but that is that and that's also one of my finished objects so that's um, nicely ties in and moves on to the next segment which is finished objects <laughs> so so yeah, I didn't actually go over what the format of the podcast would be. So after the pattern release news that I had to share, I will move on to finished objects. Then we'll go on to works in progress. Then we'll talk about spinning, what I've been spinning lately, which is a lot. And um, and then we'll move on to acquisitions, then um, giveaways and niche along news. And I do have some news on that regard. And then finally, we'll wrap up with some um, what's been going on. <laughs> Babbling, rambly randomness at the end. Anyway, so finished objects. This was the um, first one I wanted to talk to you guys about. They are in not they are not in chronological order. They are just as in um, when I remembered. So I believe this one I knit in December, early December. This was really quite ready to be published quite early on, but it was only really a week ago or so that I got the pattern photos sorted and finalised for this. Um, so that's that. I knit these using four millimeter needles I believe let me just double check my notes on that one um yeah four millimeter needles and the yarn is by Nora George Yarns in the Mrs Fig of Wisteria Way colorway which is really lovely sorry my lighting is I've had to turn on the overhead lights but I'm getting a slight blue cast from the outdoor lighting outside lighting um so sorry the colors are going to be a little bit weird this week but the weather's really miserable and I need the overhead lights. Otherwise, it'd be super dark in here. Um, okay, moving on. If I, just as a point of note, if I do forget to mention anything, any details, any like needle sizes, yarn dye, uh, colorways, anything like that, if I forget to mention it, check the show notes first. They will, all that information will probably be in there. I don't do Ravelry project pages. It just takes me too long. I knit too much. <laughs> I, I seriously, I, I tr I've tried several times, but I can't keep up with it. So, and it was just making me stressed and it was preventing me from wanting to knit. So I was just like, you know what? Not worth it. I go into a fair bit of detail on the podcast about the things that I've knit and I try and include details as much as possible in the show notes. I know having notes on Ravelry is really helpful for a lot of people and I know I've benefit benefited from them so I appreciate this is slightly hypocritical of me but I, I, I just don't have the time to do it and if it's something that's going to stop me from doing what I enjoy then I'm just I'm just not going to do it and to be honest a lot of my knitting is designs and half the time I can't really share what those are so I have Anyway, it's just one extra thing that I can do without having to deal with right now. Maybe I'll revisit it again in the future, but at the moment I'm not in a position to spend the amount of time required to do it. Um, all that to say, you can find the information you're looking for below this video on YouTube. I promised I wasn't going to ramble and that's all I've been doing. Okay, so you guys will have seen that I'd knit this waffle cow um which i talked about on the last podcast I, I remember that and i was and i used the leftovers from this the waffle pullover to do the cow so it actually uses the exact same stitch pattern that's in the body on the front here but with the yarns held in triplicate which gives this really fun almost um imperceptible sort of like 
color blending from one color to the next. Now you see here, like the colors are not like any sort of real gradient, but the way you mild the colors together just makes it really imperceptible. And the stitch pattern as well helps with this. It's very um, difficult to see where the color changes have happened, which is great because a really lovely sort of gradiated feel to it. But I wasn't entirely sure um, when writing up the pattern and I have got like a draft version of it written up but I'm not entirely happy with it and I wanted to I uh, see if there was a way I could do it where it would only utilize 20 grams of each color because that's more typical when you're purchasing mini skeins or if you have mini skeins 20 grams is um more common I didn't want people to have to go out and buy a whole new um a whole skein of yarn to only need to use like 30 grams which is what I needed of each color for this size um, that seems a little bit pointless and, and a complete waste. So I was trying it with 20 grams and what I managed to get was a little kid's one. So um, with five colours, it, with five colours of um, 20 gram minis, you'll only be able to get a little kiddie sized version of the cow. I mean, this probably will still go over my head. But it's like a super snug around the neck type of cow on me. Sorry, my hair's just gone weird. But this is like the perfect size for Layla right now, my daughter, who's almost two. So I think this will be her cow and um, this one will be mine and we can be matchy-matchy, which is really quite cute. But I am thinking, I am looking to revisit this design in the future and um, think about a different way of doing it. Well, I say potentially. It will involve using more colors, um, more minis to be able to make it work in the way that I imagine in my head. So for now I'm parking this one, this design. Um, this is a good example of when designs don't quite turn out the way you hoped. I mean it's turned out exactly how I hoped in terms of actually what it looks like but in terms of um, making it be a reasonable yarn requirement um, for me to ask people to go and like potentially purchase yarn to knit this pattern. I couldn't in good conscience publish a pattern asking people to go purchase five full skeins of fingering weight yarn which is not exactly cheap um, for a cowl that's only going to use about 30 grams of each skein. That just doesn't seem right. I couldn't, I wouldn't feel comfortable asking anyone to do that. So, um, so I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to think about it and try and come up with a better way of doing it. Um, so there we go that's that one and I used the five millimeter needles with that which has given a really lovely dense thick um, cowl and so maybe I want to, I'm thinking about maybe experimenting with a slightly larger needle size to give a more drapey feel or maybe sticking with the five millimeter and having it be dense um, I haven't decided yet I'm gonna revisit it later when I have thought about it a bit more and have other yarn that I could use for it because I don't have anything I can use use for it right now um, then another finished object I have but I can't actually show you is a design. It's a design for the mini pattern, sorry, the mini skein pattern club. I still need to come up with a good name for that. Actually, I got a few name suggestions on Instagram a few weeks ago for that, which I need to, I'm probably going to pick one of those for it because I think there was, there was some really good suggestions there. But it used a full skein of this grey colourway, which is um, the New Yorker by Nicole Kuloko and a set of her Colour Riot mini skeins. It, they were 12 10 gram minis. So in total, it was 220 grams of yarn. Actually, her, the main colour I had, um, the grey, had 10 grams extra in the skein, like it was a bigger skein than it should have been. But I only used the 100 grams because I wanted to see what it would be for anyone else using the exact yardage, which is why I have about, I think I have actually about 12 grams left over um, of that one. And some of the minis, I have such tiny amounts left over, like literally lengths that are this much, this big. Um, and some have a bit more. Of it. So it used everything of that 220 grams. I think there's not even, a, there's probably not even 15 grams left in this bag. So it used every little scrap of yarn. And the best thing about the shawl is it's quite customizable. You can knit more, a bit less in the different sections. And I could have used all of the grey and had nothing left at the end and it would have been fine. Um, but I, I wanted to see how big it would be for design purposes when um, writing up the pattern. So that was that, and that used US size 5s, 3.75mm needles. 
So next up we have a baby hat that I knit which was intended to be a gift for uh, my nephew Josh who turned one at the beginning of January but um, it didn't turn out the right size and I'll explain why. So this is the hat um, and this is actually my the star hat pattern which is one of my designs and you can see there it's got that star crown decreasing shape and the hole in the middle is just because I haven't woven in the end so it's still felt got that hole there um and this is actually a hat that I've knit for Layla in uh, a different yarn and that's the yarn that you know that's the photo in the published pattern is her hat um but the yarn I didn't really think about it in my head it was a what in I thought it was a DK and then um so I cast on and I used once because this is quite a slightly thinner DK this yarn is John Lewis's it's their own brand DK weight so it's an acrylic wool blend and um it's nice and soft it's great for like a baby knit it's machine washable um but it felt like a quite like a thinner DK so I went down a needle size to 3.75 millimeter needles the pattern called for four millimeter and um it didn't occur to me to go up in stitch count I don't know why I think I was a bit busy I was a bit um rushed in trying to get this knit in time for his birthday and uh which clearly I didn't give him um and uh and yeah and it was just so I just cast on for the baby slash um toddler size and knit it up as the pattern was written as it was written and I looked at it at the end and I was just like I'm not sure that's going to fit him for very long um and then it occurred to me the pattern was written for worsted weight and obviously for a needle size bigger as well which would have resulted in a slightly bigger hat than this um so I tried it on Layla and obviously Layla's a year older so she's bigger and it did go on her head like it's not not going to go on his head but it was too short like it would what it came up to here on her head like it wasn't covering her ears and that kind of defeats the point of a hat for children in my opinion like you want it to cover at least part of the ears so I haven't given it to him yet I'm planning on finishing it off weaving in the ends and setting it aside to be a gift for a future baby that comes along in a friend or family member's life um we don't have any babies in our that are happening anytime soon so um at least none that i'm aware of so this will go into a gift pile for the future next up i have three pairs of socks to talk you through all of these were knit on um 2.25 millimeter needles either chargus or high high sharps and um all knit 64 stitches using my just my general vanilla sock recipe i think all of them have a garter german short row heel, heel and all have a two by two rib so i just thought i'd get that all out of the way the first one is um out of yarn by lavender loon yarn company and this is in the suit coat colorway it is basically a dark navy with um bits of white and brown throughout which is actually knit up really beautifully i really like this sort of micro striping type spirally effect with yarn so this is going to be a gift for either my my, my brother maybe or my father-in-law haven't decided who this will go to but somebody and next up we have the, these fun pair of socks this is the mind the gap colorway by trailing clouds and these are all the colors of the london underground lines so let's see if i can remember them all we'll start with the green here so this is the district line northern line metropolitan line overground jubilee central circle bakerloo waterloo city victoria piccadilly and hammersmith and city line so those are all the lines of the underground and obviously it's repeated i think i got like three repeats two two full repeats i think two and almost three repeats um in both pairs of socks and i just had some um leftover yarn from a different pair of socks that i popped in for the heels and again used my mini heel flap adjustment and german short row heel in garter for these i find this heel this heel works really well for self-striping because it doesn't disrupt the stripes at all whereas a traditional heel flap and gusset does because you've got all those extra stitches but the little mini heel flap only adds a few stitches so it doesn't disrupt the stripes anywhere nearly as badly and or at all like you can't even tell the stripes are affected in any way which is great um and then finally 
So this was what I was knitting over Christmas. I cast this on a couple days before Christmas Eve. So I didn't do a Christmas Eve cast on, but I was knitting these over the Christmas period. And then on New Year's Day, I cast on these socks. These were my New Year's Day cast on. These were gonna be my Christmas Eve cast on, but I didn't end up casting on anything Christmas Eve. Um, so this is yarn by Joni Unraveled. Uh, my lo lovely friend Kate, who actually lives locally to me. Um, and this is in her coffee and TV colorway, which there was a lot of that going on around Christmas and New Year's, so it felt really appropriate. And it's just this really lovely sort of neutral base color with lots of fun speckles throughout. And again, I just had some um, leftover from another project, which I popped in for the heels. And that's that. So those are all the socks that I've knit in the last couple of, well, since Christmas. And um, the last thing I have to share with you, this is another upcoming, uh, it's not really an upcoming design, it's an upcoming redesign of an existing design of mine. So this is the Little Nugget Pullover. I already have a little nugget pullover that's released. Um, I'm updating the pattern and it's actually almost done. This will be released probably um, just after I get back or updated just after I get back from Vogue. Um, so yeah, that's that. This is the one I knit for Layla. Obviously I don't have any other children to knit for right now. Um, and this is in the two to four year size. So I've knit it quite long. The pattern is written for this length. Length of garments is totally customizable. Like I think, that's unless you've got like weird like specific patterning or something really difficult to modify like when it's a plain stockinette pullover length is like the easiest thing to modify in anything and that is you know i do say in the pattern you can just obviously knit it shorter or as long as you want um so right now at the age of almost two this is almost like a jumper dress on her and then as she grows and there's plenty of room for her to grow into this as she grows it will grow with her um the thing that gets me is when i look at jumpers for Layla or when she's been bought jumpers before like the ones in her age range they stop right at her waist where her like just above or just at where her trouser waistline goes and I'm just like she bends over that rides up and then her back is out and exposed and I'm just like I mean she's wearing a vest at the moment because it's winter but still I'm just like I want it to be long I want it to cover her back properly I, I don't want her back to get cold um it's something that's been instilled in me since childhood. Like, don't let your back get cold. Like, you'll get you'll get sick, um, which kind of came about after, um, not not after, but um, I understood the reasoning behind it after I got a really bad kidney infection one year. And uh, I'm not sure if it was related or not, but I've always been super paranoid about like my back being exposed ever since. So I think it's kind of just translated to my children, to my child, and how I feel like dressing her. So I want to make sure her back is covered all the time. Um, it's quite funny, like the things that just stick with you. Anyway, I was, um, so that's this one. And I'm actually working on another one for her, which I'll show you in whips in a second. Um, but I just wanted to say the original Little Nugget sweater I knit for Layla, um, I actually, I knit two or three of the original design, but um, the very first one that I knit was also striped that I used leftovers for. And um, and yeah, it was really special. But um, so with all of our stuff that arrived yesterday, one of the boxes we opened up was all of baby, Layla's, all the babies, all of Layla's baby clothes that we'd kept. Um, like obviously all the hand knits and the ones that I'd made and the ones we'd been gifted as well as like some of the special baby clothes that really meant a lot from her first year. A lot of them I want to try and turn into a baby quilt for, not a baby quilt, turn into a quilt out of her baby clothes for her to have. I don't know when I'll get to that, but at some point. Um, and then I, I, I came across the original little nugget pullover and look how tiny it is. I can't believe, I literally started crying when I saw this. It was so small. It is so itty bitty um, compared to the new one. I mean, look at that. She wore the original one up until she was about six months old, is how long it fit her for. Um, can't believe how big she is now compared to how how equal she was. Um, I also, obviously pre-baby, didn't have a huge understanding of how big children really were when I designed this, which is another reason why I uh, wanted to redo the, redo the design. The original design went up to 18 months, I think, and so now the current one goes up to 10 years I think it does um, or 8 years I think it goes up to 10 um, 
and yeah so this was originally meant to be the zero to three month size and it turned out to be far too big to be a zero to three it was definitely more of a three to six six to nine kind of range um depending obviously on your child but yeah so <laughs> definitely far far too um too big for it to be zero to three so that was one of the reasons i you know as layla got older and i realized how like the sizing on that wasn't right um it just yeah I felt I felt the need to redo it and to make it right and because it was such a special pattern to me I didn't want it to be um I didn't want to have that sort of negative feeling towards it anyway so that's that and that'll be coming soon if you already have the pattern you will get the update, updated version once it's released if you don't already have the pattern you can purchase the pattern as it is right now and then once it's updated you'll get it um the advantage there is once I update it the price will go up because at the moment the price is based on um, the price it was previously obviously the price it currently is which doesn't reflect how I price my garment patterns at the moment but only because I haven't updated it yet and once it's updated then um, with the size range that I want as well then um, then yeah the, the pattern price will go up as well by a little bit if you want to get it now while it's a little bit cheaper before I update it by all means go ahead you will still get that update so that's it for um, finished objects quite a lot there um, now we will move on to works in progress and there are far fewer works in progress you'll be glad to know there are only <laughs> three to talk about so it should be pretty quick um, first up we have another pair of socks so again, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail because I've just been over three pairs of socks and these are being knit the exact same way. So this is, it looks kind of crazy on camera. Um, the yarn is by Into The World. It is their, let me grab the label. It's that, I think it's their Pococo sock. Where is it? Yeah, Pococo sock, 460 yards, 75-25, superwash marina nylon in the spinner's end colorway. This was a seconds yarn at Rhinebeck. Um, so it was in their sales section. And yeah, also doing the German short row heel and garter with the mini heel flap. This is, um, I'm not sure who this will be for, but um, I cast these on because we went to the cinema at the weekend. Perry's dad came over to babysit Saturday night and after Layla had gone to bed, and uh, Perry and I popped out to go see Aquaman. So I had the cuffs cast on and knit um, most of the leg actually at the movies. And then, um, yeah, then I've turned the heel and knit a little bit further down, but I've just set these aside the last few days, haven't really worked on them since the weekend, mainly just to keep them for travel knitting or, you know, weekend knitting when, you know, days when I have nugget and I don't have a whole lot of time to, um, knit necessarily and this is something easy I can pick up and knit a few rounds if she's playing on her own or if we're watching a program or even when she's eating dinner sometimes I'll knit a bit at the table while she's eating um, so that's what those are being kept for and in here we have another pair of socks although I say pair it's a single sock and if you guys have been following for a while you know I don't knit socks one at a time there are very few occasions where I do mainly being when I knit for, for Layla, my daughter, also called her Nugget, if you're new, you didn't get that. Um, when I knit her socks, I knit them one at a time, mainly because her socks are so tiny, like there's no issues for me at all with second sock syndrome with those. Um, so these, some little itty bitty sockies, look how cute these are. And if you're curious, um, I'm knitting a 48 stitch size. So I do have a baby sock recipe pattern which you can purchase in my Ravelry shop, which basically this is what I follow, that's the stitch count that I'm using, is the largest stitch count in that pattern. Almost all of my socks, sock designs, um, from the last year or two, have a 48 stitch sock uh, size in them. So if you're purchasing one of my pattern socks, um, it will always say on the pattern page what stitch counts it goes up to or down to. And if it has a 48 stitch count um, in the design, that's this size. So it's a good size for a toddler, essentially, is what it is, or a, um, uh, a young child, depending on how skinny their legs are. Now this size for Layla is actually still got quite a bit of room in it for her to grow into. Not a whole, I mean, it does have some negative ease, but she'll be able to wear these for a while. Um, 
pants and I decided to put a heel in them because quite frankly they're more at, at her age they're more practical when she's wearing them with shoes for them to have a heel in um they'll stay on her feet better she does have a couple of pairs of tube socks which she does wear but um I think these will be easier for her to keep on her feet and um yeah she's so excited about them as well uh, whenever she sees me knitting uh, like it's funny when I'm knitting on these like even back when they were just little cuffs she'd come up to me look point at them and be like socks socks like she knows I'm knitting socks so um and then when she sees and when when I say yeah socks and then she holds her foot up and is like look, I want to try them on like okay she is so she gets so excited about putting socks on in the morning whether they're hand knit ones or store bought ones or whatever like, she's always excited about socks so hopefully she will always be excited about socks um so these are for her all that to say um the yarn is by bad wolf girl studios and a lovely meg gave me this little 50 gram skein um last year at vogue knitting live it was a um experimental colorway that she was um playing around with i think it was maybe a slytherin themed colorway she was saying most of the samples she brought to hand out were um from like harry potter experiments like dye experiments so with all the green i'm assuming this is a slytherin one but i'm not sure if this ever became an actual colorway in her shop or not but it was a little 50 gram skein sample so um these will be little socks for leila and i'm knitting these only when i go to my slimming world group so this is about two two groups worth of progress um i'm there for about like an hour roughly about an hour and a bit each time so when i'm not chatting with people i knit on this in the group and um and yeah so i'm keeping this for group knitting and um i always get whenever i pull out my knitting i always get lots of questions from people about it which is quite which is quite nice and so yeah both of those are also being knit on 2.25 millimeter needles and my last work in progress which is the main one that's been on my needles this week is a hand spun project which is really exciting so i'm knitting another little nugget pullover for layla as I mentioned and <clears throat> I'm using hand spun so I'm using this hand spun which I actually did a vlog about spinning this um, this was some Rolex by Felview Fibers in the St. Peter's Posey colorway and I spun it up I split this I split the yarn the yarn the fiber into two bundles I spun it up and ply them together as a two ply. I was originally going to do a chain ply, but then decided it'd be fun to see what a two ply would look like because that was my original plan. Um, and then I realised once I plied it, it, it was very soft. But also that I plied it very uh, loosely, like not with a whole lot of twist. I mean, you can see that there's there, there is very minimal twist in some of these um, areas, of this, some areas of this yarn. I mean, other areas are fine, but most of it is very underplied like this this strand here is very underplied but <clears throat> it meant it was very soft and it almost when it, when i knit it up it knits like a single ply like it feels like a single ply when you're knitting it um and even in the knitted fabric when you look at it some areas just look like it's single ply which is really quite fun um i decided to use a commercial yarn for the ribbing because i figured the ribbing is where you're going to get the most wear and tear on a garment especially like around the neck at the cuffs on the on the sleeves and the hem of the jumper that's kind of like where the most rubbing will probably happen as she's like taking it off pulling it on doing things and so i wanted it and also because it's the bit that's on the edge it'll be the touching her skin for sure and stuff and i wanted to make sure there was no irritation issues even though it is like really soft just wanting to be doubly sure and so this is one of those little 50 gram uh this is a little 50 gram cake or skein that i had from a gradient set by woo sheeps um which i talked about i think on the last podcast that i was deciding to split it up and just use them as i needed them for like contrasting cuffs heels and toes on socks doing like um socks with them on their own uh, things like this just using them as and when i need a nice sort of cool neutral color so this is what the garment currently looks like and tuck the ends in and this is where we're at we have two sleeves and a little body which is on its way so what i decided to do normally i knit the body and then go back and do the sleeves 
um, but because I'm using hand spun and I only have this one skein, what I decided to do was I'll knit the body and I knit for about an inch after I split the sleeves, um, split for the sleeves. And then I went back and last night I knit this sleeve and finished it off. And then this morning I picked up and knit this sleeve and finished that off. And then now I just have the body to knit. And all this means is I can now just keep going until I run out of yarn. And then I just pop in a hem like the bottom ribbing, the hem ribbing, and then we're done. And that means I can maximize the amount of uh, hand spun that I use and I don't have to like guesstimate when I need to stop so I have enough to do the sleeves. So, so yeah, that's why I've done that. <coughs> and if I can try and show it to you up close, maybe you can see what I mean about it looking like a single ply. And maybe on the back it shows a bit better. And you see like there's areas here where it definitely looks a bit more like a single ply. Like, Anyway, I love the texture, I'm loving the colours, and I think it will really look good on her. I think she'll love it. I hope she'll love it. And um, and yeah, it's really fun. It's done. It's doing this really fun sort of like striping thing all on its own, which is really exciting. And um, so there's that. That is my last work in progress, and this will probably be finished in a couple of days. I originally thought this might be my knitting for Vogue. Uh, to take to Vogue Knitting Live, but this will probably be finished before the weekend, so um, <laughs> unlikely is the answer to that one. And um, and yeah, so that's my works in progress. I'm gonna grab a drink really quickly, and then I'll be back with spinning news. I just remembered. I completely forgot to tell you where this yarn was from. I'm so sorry. Um, the yarn for this sweater, the Little Nugget sweater, the revamped version, size 2 to 4, this was by Dyed in the Wool. I meant to say that, I'm so sorry. She sent me these colours. Now, the colours didn't actually have any um, tags on them, so I'm not sure if she's named them or if they've got any specific names other than purple, green, orange, blue and pink or um, if they're gonna have like a be a set or something. I need to actually contact her <laughs> and find out what she's doing with that, if she's planning on doing kits or not and um, sort of coordinate that with her a little bit better. Um, but I've been really bad at doing, catching up with people that I need to catch up with. So that's another thing on my list to do. At this point, probably after Vogue, but I can hope. Um, so yeah, okay, <laughs> now let's crack on with some spinning. This is my little basket of spinning goodies. Look at that, look how much spinning is in there, that's pretty cool. Um, and that's not actually everything, I have a few other little samples that I've spun up as well, but I'm not gonna bore you with all of that. Um, okay, so a few of these were actually spun up before, like during December, actually most of these were spun up during December. Um, which you will have, if you watch Vlogmas, you will have seen most of these as I was spinning them and as I spoke about them on Vlogmas as well. So I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail today, but I thought I would quickly show you the skeins um, and tell you the yardages, fibre content and stuff like that and, and how I spun them up um, really quickly to run you through in case you didn't watch Vlogmas. And if you're not interested, you can just skip ahead a few minutes. So the first up, we have um, this beautiful skein. This was fibre by Felview Fibres again, and this was four shades of Shetland Rolex. There was 110 grams. I got about 402 yards or 367 meters in total. And it was a two ply, it's a two ply. I spun it, um, it was a woolen draft, uh, so it's woolen spun, uh, long draw um, draft for the most part um, for this. And yeah, I really like how it's turned out. It turned out to be a sort of fingering sport for the most part throughout. Can you see there, that's a good representation. Um, and uh, yeah, really like how this has turned out. It is definitely not necessarily next to the skin soft if you're like putting it around your neck, but maybe for like mittens potentially, or um, for like a lined hat maybe, if you line the brim so that it's um, not on your forehead. But yeah, because I think after a while this would get a little bit scratchy on the forehead. But you know, it is Shetland at the end of the day. But it's really lovely and considering how like sort of rustic that breed is usually thought about, it is quite soft. It's just not necessarily completely next to skin soft for me. But really beautiful and trying to figure out what this will become. Um, then I think I then spun these 
two little skeins. So I had a, had a braid from the Shepherd's Hut in, it was an oatmeal BFL base um, fiber in the Courtyard Garden, Garden colorway. So that's what the colorway is. Now what I decided to do with this, and I'd seen people um, sort of do this with uh, um, like comparing woolen woolen draft to like a woolen uh, to a worsted draft and seeing what the differences are in like a two ply and a three ply and things like that but usually the colors um they use like they have different colored fibers and stuff um or the base fiber is different colors or it's dyed afterwards so it's a little bit hard to tell i hadn't seen it done with a chain ply method so i did half of the braid worsted draft chain plied and the other half i did woolen draft chain plied and then sort of to compare and see how different they look now in person i can completely see the difference before without even having to check the tags um i can tell you which one's which i'm not sure how well it will come up on camera on this camera anyway i did take a photo and post it to instagram after i'd done it and you could really see the difference um i'm just not sure how well it's coming up on here so I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell. So a worsted spun yarn um, tends to be more shiny. It's a bit more smooth. It's, um, which is this one, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Um, it just tends to be a bit more smooth and shiny. Whereas a, and it's a bit more dense. The fibers are, it's more dense because it's been smooth. Whereas with a woolen spun, it's a little bit more matte, it's not as shiny, it's got more of like this fuzzy halo, I don't know if you can see up here, you can see that a little bit there, a bit of a fuzzy halo, um, it's got more fuzzy bits to it, it's not as smooth and it's a bit more lofty and airy um, sort of yarn. So in, like I said, in person I can really see the difference between them, specifically on the shiny and smooth aspects of it, but as, on camera it's not picking up as well the differences I mean anyway it was a fun experiment to see how this would turn out and uh, yeah I look forward to figuring out what to do with this so I got about from the worsted spun I got 84 yards or 77 meters and from the woman spun I got 82 yards or 75 meters um, so very similar yardages and they both weighed about 50 grams each so I did pretty well splitting the yarn there the fiber there then I spun up this beautiful skein by the shepherd's hut as well it was it's a bit more purple like a bit more of a pinkish tone to it it's, i've got a blue cast at the moment so it looks a bit more bluer on screen uh this is a this was a braid of rambouillet roving in the right in a ribena sort of colorway and i got a two ply uh where's the draft i did with this i got 375 yards or 344 meters out of 100 grams so squarely a uh, sport slash little bits of DK in this one. This was fairly consistent in fairness. Like I really enjoyed spinning this. I definitely want to try a Rambouillet again. Um, really, really enjoyed this fiber. Very springy. Um, I then had fun with an art bat. This was really fun to knit with, also from the Shepherd's Hut. This was the Bonfire Party um, art bat. Um, when I first showed this to Perry, he called it loft insulation. So that's what it looked like before I spun it up. And this is what it looks like spun up. It's really fun, really textured. Absolutely love it. It turned out, I did it as a, um, so it's a mixed fiber art bat. There was no like fiber content with it. 100 grams, I got 303 yards or 277 meters. So again, very much, I think overall a sport to DK kind of weight probably more DK overall uh, with some bulkier bits throughout with the textures um, I, I, I did like a mixture of drafting styles with this depending on how it was drafting um, I guess there were bits where I was doing like a short forward slash short backward draw and some parts where it was more of a long draw style ish <laughs> my drafting style is kind of still not 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 perfect by any stretch so i i wouldn't call it a true long draw it's kind of like a long draw ish is how i would describe it 
Um, but yeah, really happy with how this has turned out. Again, no idea what these will be. Um, at some point I will come up with an idea. But I seem to have settled into what is my default spinning uh, weight. It's somewhere between like, a is around a sport weight. It's like sport to fingering or sport to DK is kind of where I tend to lean when I'm, you know, just spinning. Um, then next, I spun up something I got for Christmas. Then we, then we had Christmas. So this was everything I spun up before Christmas. And then Christmas happened and there was several days where I did no spinning because of Christmas and it was busy. Then one of my Christmas presents from my parents, I originally, I don't know why on Instagram said it was from Perry, but it wasn't, it was from my family. Um, they got me two uh, sort of, I guess, color sets from Hilltop Cloud. It was her Colors of Cambria, uh, so like color sets so there were 100 gram bags with five different colors in them 20 grams of each or approximately 20 grams of each so this was the color set that i got it was called steam absolutely beautiful and so it went from this dark dark blue navy to this lighter blue to this oatmeal color to this rust orange and then to this sort of really deep rich sort of burgundy red and absolutely loved it because i had two sets what i did was i spun each 20 gram um onto its own bobbin and then i two plied the 20 grams together and then kept each color as its own little mini skein to kind of keep the colors separated like that um and i wanted to like this i specifically asked for this for christmas because i knew i wanted to spin it up this way to do maybe a shawl design with it is what I was thinking. So the fibre content is a um, mixture of Welsh Mountain and uh, BFL, so it's Cambrian wool. And so for the dark navy, so all of the skeins were around 34 to 42 grams depending. Um, so overall for the whole lot I got 566 yards or 518 metres in total yardage wise which is actually pretty pretty good. And I'd say overall it's a sport DK, sorry, fingering to sport weight overall. It came out fairly, fairly consistent-ish throughout um, weight-wise. So starting with the, the navy, there was 114 yards. I'm just going to say the yards because it's easier to say one. The blue is 115 yards. The oatmeal I got 102 yards. The rust I got 112. And then finally the burgundy, I got 122 yards. So um, that's how those spun up. And I'm really excited. I think this is going to be my VKL project. This is what I'm going to have wound up and ready to go and cast on. I'm planning on doing a design with this. It's going to be a really simple design uh, with hand spun in mind specifically. So it's going to be one of those ones that you could just sort of weigh your yarn as you go. And... Um, stop whenever you need to change colors whenever you need to it's gonna be really fun and really really quite simple um in that regards so quite excited about that um i need to think about that <laughs> as well and get get on it um and then um yeah and get on that then the next two things i spun up i spun up another Christmas present. This one was from Perry. It's by Spin City UK. It was a sort of gradient jade um, art bat and it went from this sort of pale colour, from this sort of pale sort of like minty spearmint green to a this sort of like sea foamy green colour here. Then it went on to this, this foresty green which is in this ply onto basically a black at the end. And what I ended up doing was I spun the first two colours onto one bo um, bobbin, the other two colours onto the second bobbin, and then just did a two ply together. So it's barber pulled throughout. And this little stripe here is actually just a separate mini skein. Uh, it was only about four or five grams um, of what was left over on the first bobbin, just plied back on itself as a two ply. Um, and so in total, I did it uh, as a woolen draft two plied. I got out of 100 grams, 261 yards or 239 meters. So this turned out more of a DK slash worsted with some areas being a bit more bulky. 
and the fibre content was Corydale, Tussa Silk, Angelina and Firestar. So it's nice and sparkly, especially in some parts are super sparkly. You can see that there. Very sparkly. And then as a palette cleanser and just to see what would happen if I intentionally tried to spin something thicker. Up until now everything I've spun I've been trying to just be consistent and trying to get an even draft and I guess subconsciously trying to spin finely, spin fine um, and get like a nice fine diameter yarn. But then I was like well what if I tried to spin thicker? I've always heard that spinning thicker yarns is harder once you know how to spin thin so um, I wanted to give it a go and sort of see how different it felt to do that and so that's what I did with this. So this was a braid of Shetland silk mix from the Shepherd's Hut. It was in the Autumn Walk, Autumn Walk colorway. Really lovely autumnal colors. And I sort of just split the braid in half and um, didn't really strip it down into lots of thinner strips. I just kept it in one and then like drafted from that um, or pre-drafted it and then went from there. Um, and yeah, it wasn't too difficult um, it was it was definitely difficult to keep it thicker because it wanted to draft a bit thinner than what it did and or what I wanted it to do. So there are definitely parts of it throughout where it has uh, come out a little, quite a bit thinner than I want than I was aiming for. So it was a good experiment again to see how this would work. Um, but yeah, I got on over, overall. I'd say this is more of a um, chunkier yarn. There's a hundred. Out of 100 grams, there's 123 yards and 112 meters. So definitely more of a like a bulky um, skein overall. And uh, yeah, I really like how this has turned out. Maybe we'll turn these into some mittens or a hat at some point. Um, really, really not sure at the moment, but it was a really fun experiment and really enjoyed it. And, um, and yeah, definitely something I will look to do again with some really colorful yarn fiber, I think. It'd be quite fun to like practice with this whole like spinning more bulky um and getting a really nice like chunky like sort of spiral ply on it which would be really quite fun and then finally the thing i've been working on on and off currently is still a work in progress so i had a lovely viewer send me some um rolags to practice with that she had prepped herself and she'd said that these had been in storage for a while so they weren't in the best condition but they were probably fine to practice with and um and yeah and they were great to practice with i already spun up three of them i think and i had another three sort of sets of colors of rolags to spin up so i wanted to spin those up and then i also had a sample rolag from felview vipers that i wanted to spin as well so um i did that too so i have four little minis here so two are finished and the other two i still need to ply um these don't have colorway names or anything i don't know what the fiber contents are they all sort of just a bit random uh, this one had a lot of sparkle in it so it's like an icy blue with lots of white in it and then this one was like gradients of purple to cream and these haven't been washed yet so the fiber the twist hasn't been set and then this one was a like a darker blue to green to cream sorry get that to focus okay like a darker blue to cream um, and again these have all been these have all been chain plied so i'll be chain, chain plying this as well and then this one was the felvy fibers sample which was varying shades of beige there's some like orangey browns in here as well so this one feels really soft this one i don't know what the fiber content is but um yeah so these still need to be plied i'll probably ply these later today and um and yeah and then i'll wash and set all the fibers i'm not sure if i'm going to think about starting to spin anything else before i go away or if i'm just going to wait until i get back before i start anything else just because um yeah there's a lot going on and i have lots of boxes to now start going through so i'm not sure there's going to be much time for spinning between now and when i leave i'm afraid which is exactly next week i've just realized i leave in a, a week today probably around this time actually i think my flight yeah my flight will be um almost exactly three weeks oh, sorry one week today ah <sighs> too much talking and i'm not used to it moving on to acquisitions and i realized i've been doing most of this off the top of my head and not actually checking my notes so i hope i haven't missed anything out um 
be sure to check the show notes below the video in case there is anything I missed. It'll be there. Um, so for acquisitions, I received a couple of packages recently, which I was, ex well, actually I was expecting both of them, but I'd kind of forgotten about one of them. So it was a bit of a surprise when it came in. And uh, Layla helped me open them. So the videos are actually on Instagram of her helping me open these packages. For some reason, I'm having trouble getting videos off my phone onto my computer at the moment. So I'm not able to insert the footage into the podcast. So if you wanted to watch it, you can go over to my Instagram and check that out. Um, so the first package was from lovely Lauren at Lolo Did It. She is the main dyer and brains behind Lolo Did It Yarns. And she uh, recently has released a new yarn base called Guernsey Sport and as soon as I saw it pop up on her Instagram I messaged her and I was just like I have to design something in this yarn um, because if you don't know my husband Perry is actually from Guernsey he was born in Guernsey he spent half his childhood growing up in Guernsey before his parents uh, moved him and his sister to what they <laughs> jokingly refer to as the mainland when when he was about eight or nine so before they moved to like England proper they were living on the little island of Guernsey in the Channel Islands um, so I'd always wanted to design Perry a pullover and he's incredibly fussy he's a very fussy person when it comes to his clothes he's just very particular <laughs> I think is how he puts it um, so just going clothes shopping with him is actually a little bit stressful because he's just so picky <laughs> stressful for me not for him for me and um, so I've always wanted to design, design a sweater for him, but he wouldn't wear anything that's too heavy. Like I couldn't knit him a worsted weight pullover because he just wouldn't wear it. Um, so I settled on designing him something out of fingering weight. Then Lauren came out with the sport weight and named it Guernsey Sport. And I was like, well, of course I have to do something with that now. Um, that sounds about right. And um, and I'm really inspired by like, the whole Guernsey style of um, pullovers and stuff as well. And again, it's been on my bucket list of things that I wanted to design. It's like a Guernsey inspired pullover. Again, because Perry's from Guernsey, it's kind of like that connection as well. And um, anyway, so yeah, I've actually ordered a book on um, Gansey knitting because I want to learn a bit more about the history of it before I sit down to design something. Um, I already know it's not going to be um, exactly um, Gansey style construction because having spoken to Perry about it there are certain aspects of the traditional Gansey construction that he um, doesn't want <laughs> essentially in his pullover which is fine I'm designing something for him it's, so it's not going to be a traditional Gansey in terms of how it looks it's going to be Gansey inspired and then I think I will probably design another Gansey style and keep it more traditional looking um, in the future at some point but that's basically what this is going to be and actually before I show you the yarn I'm going to insert a clip of Perry opening it because even though Nugget helped me open it I then put it all back in the packaging and I got Perry to open it up and get his first impression so I'm going to put that in the video now what we do? I don't, I don't open want... it Open what? Take it out of the bag. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> There's lots of green I'm running out of hands. Okay, the rest are in packs. It's a green yarn explosion. Oh, it's Guernsey Sport. This is the yarn I was going to use to um, knit your jumper. Oh, uh, okay. I wanted to see what you thought of the colour. Yeah, I like that colour. It's got a bit of like subtle variegation to it, some oranges and some darker greens in there as well. Yeah, no, I like it. It's good. Good. It's, it's suitable for my Guernsey heritage. <laughs> So yeah, he's quite excited. He's <laughs> not very like outwardly excited about it, but we've been talking about it and he seems to be quite excited about the prospects. So at some point after all this craziness in January dies down, we're going to have to sit down and go through some stitch dictionaries, some ideas that I have and have Perry tell me what he wants, what he doesn't want, what things he does like, what he doesn't like, and so I can put together something <laughs> and start figuring out the maths to design him a garment. So this is the yarn. I'll show you on here properly so you can get a good view of it. Um, so yeah, and this is the colorway that he picked out. Again, I picked out a few of Lauren's colorways that I knew he would like, and actually all the ones I picked out he did like, and he ended up picking this one, which is Rumpelstiltskin. So this is really rich, dark, 
um, green, like it's really sort of, it's almost like a dark khaki colour, it's not showing up properly on this, oh there we go, that looks a bit better. It's a bit more like this top edge here, it's a bit more of this like warmer tone to it. Um, and it's got these hot, this like flashes of like orange speckling in there as well, which is really fun. And Perry actually really likes the colour orange as well, which is good. And, uh, and yeah, he picked this colour in the end because he doesn't have a lot of um, green in his wardrobe and I think green really suits him. Um, he already has a really nice navy pullover and a red one as well. So um, those are the other two colours I'd picked out. So, um, so yeah, I'm really happy with this. I have nine skeins on this yarn in total. Um, so I need to, once I get back, I'll probably wind up, wind up one of them to start swatching some ideas as well for that. And then Lauren being as generous as she always is, sent two extra sock sets. And these are both on her plush sock base, which I've never actually knit with before. So that is 75% merino wool, 15% nylon and 10% tensile. So one, this one is in the crisp apple strudel colorway with sweetness as the mini skein. And then this one, same base, is Edelweiss with um, Big Girls Don't Cry as the mini skein. And both of these come with tape measure, a mini sort of Lolo bar, and some um, bulb stitch markers. So these are gonna be prices. I'm holding on to these to use for prices in the future podcast. And the other package that arrived was from a lovely viewer of the podcast as well. She sent a sweet package with um, something for Layla and something for Perry. And so I actually was expecting the something for Perry because she'd contacted me about this a while ago and she sent Perry some licorice, which is now gone. <laughs> so I can't show it to you. But the thing she sent for Layla was so sweet and such a surprise um, when we opened it up. And to be quite honest, I didn't even realize that she'd made this. This this cute little teddy bear. So sweet. This teddy is just the most adorable thing. Um, the moment Layla saw it, she just gave this big cuddle. Again, it's in the videos that's on um, my Instagram, if you want to see. And she absolutely loves this teddy. Um, she loves a lot of her cuddly toys right now, but this is one of the ones that she um, takes to bed sometimes now. Like, her bedtime teddies have um like grown exponentially she now sleeps with four or five teddies in her bed it was just it started out with just one and then it became two and then in the last week she's now bumped up to four or five in bed um so sometimes she takes this one um i'm not i, I don't mind her sleeping with it that's not the issue my only concern is it getting damaged uh, she's already tried to pull it through the bars of her bed once and almost ripped an arm off so i'm a little bit um I'd rather her not sleep with this one just to be safe. I don't want it to get damaged. And like I said, I didn't realise at first until I read the card that Olga had set, sent with this um, to, like, I didn't realise that it was, it was handmade. It looks so beautiful. I mean, not that handmade isn't beautiful, but it looked like a store-bought teddy. Um, and it is, it's so cute. He's so sweet. And, uh, and yeah, Layla, Layla loves him already. Him or her, I don't know. We haven't decided. Um, Anyway, so that's that. Um, in terms of give knit along and giveaway news, I have actually drawn prizes for the uh, knit alongs. So we did have with the triple Dutch Cardi knit along, we had the last year's sock club knit along come to an end. So I've drawn prizes for those, and actually for the triple Dutch cardigan, um, there were only three people who entered uh, finished objects in the end in the thread. So I'm actually going to give a prize to each of them. Um, so I will, uh, I'm actually not going to have a chance to do a prize winners video until after I get back from New York. So I hope you guys don't mind. I wouldn't have been able to mail anything out before then anyway. So I figured there wasn't much point doing it before I go. So once I get back from New York, I'm going to do the prize winners video. I'll announce the prize winners for the sock club. I've done some extra prizes for the sock club as well. So rather, other than just the last month of the sock club, I'm also going to do prizes where I just draw from the full fo threads for both of them as well so i'm doing some more general prizes and then the triple dutch cardigan prizes as well so i'm going to do all of that in one video after i get back from new york and um i've also decided to do a just because giveaway just because for no other reason other than i want to because i want to give back to you guys a little bit and um you guys have all been so supportive and it's been last year was an amazing year i can't believe i am where i am now with my knitting both as like 
a business and just as a community in general I feel like it's been an incredible experience so far it's been an incredible ride and yeah I'd like to give back just because I can I have quite a few prizes that have piled up and I wanted to share the joy I can get this all out of the bag I just had it stored in a bag that I had lying around so to enter for this giveaway all you have to do is I just wrote down something here for you guys answer um tell me something you're currently enjoying uh what do you want to see more of from me There's, these are like the three options you can answer you don't you can answer them all or you can answer just one you don't have to do um any anything particular particularly diff difficult so tell me something you're currently enjoying or tell me what you would like to see more of from me this year more vlogs more podcasts more spinning content like what would you like to see um and finally just tell me anything <laughs> anything you want really um, just leave a comment below this video on YouTube. I'm going to do this one as a YouTube entry um, only giveaway and the next time I podcast which will probably be in February I will announce the winner. So this won't be in the prize winners video this will be in an actual podcast is when I'll announce it. So first up we have these two yellow skeins of yarn from uh, Vidalana by Knit Crate. This is on their um, it's their bananas colorway on their sport base. It's the the softest sock base so it's 75% superwash merino 15% nylon and 10% cashmere and it is super soft it is 437 yards or 400 meters in 100 grams and there's two of them then I have some yarn by um, Inca sign um, yeah by Inca sign and they sent me some yarn to review and I knit a hat for Layla out of out of a skein of this well actually from this skein this is a leftover so I had another full skein and I decided to pair the leftover with it just so that you have a bit more to do whatever you want to do with it and um, also this skein as well so the purple is a chain plied yarn it's sort of like a chainette type of yarn it's the it's burgundy colorway on the chicken base is 70% baby alpaca 7% wool and 23% polyamid this is a really soft really lovely and Layla actually really loves this hat um, she's not super into hats at the moment like she won't keep them on the head on her head for very long but she likes to play with them and like practice putting them on so she does love her hat and it's also this skein which is so beautiful it's in the gum colorway it's a bulky it's 86 meters and it's 65% baby alpaca 35% dry text hand dye and it is super soft um, and I think that would make a really lovely hat as well and then finally we have a project bag from Lauren of Lolo did it again and she sent this to me a while ago to give away as a prize as well uh, so that once again you get tape measure a little mini Lolo bar uh, sample which is really nice I uh, like hand balm sorry I should have said hand balm and a little tin of um, those bulb stitch markers as well and the project bag has some yarn on it like it's a picture of yarn that's been printed onto fabric and turned into a project bag so that is going to be the bumper prize package for one lucky person so be sure to enter below this video if you are interested um yeah so i think that covers all the main things and now we just have just some random all the randomness that's been going on for the last couple of weeks that since I last spoke to you guys to catch you guys up on so vlogmas happened that was all in December I actually vlogged the whole month until New Year's and um and yeah Christmas was was lovely if not exhausting but it was really lovely I really enjoyed it um unfortunately one of the gifts I knit for Christmas did not fit its recipient so my brother I knit my brother one of the his gifts was a pair of socks this sock these are the ripple sock pattern that I designed and I released last year I actually designed these socks initially for my mum and I knit them out of a yellow that I had from Lauren of Lolo did it and uh, I released the pattern and I gifted her her socks for Mother's Day and then I knit up this pair for my brother out of this yarn by I think it was Riverstone yarns it was in a knit crate that I got and I did it how I normally knit his socks with the normal stitch count that I use but I also added a sort of like a slip stitch detail to the back of the heel before doing working the heel for about 20-ish rows no not even 20 rows probably more like 
yeah 15 to 20 rows in this section here just to give a little bit more of a like a tighter fit around the back of the ankle and I've done that before on a pair of socks for him and he really loves those socks like he's literally worn them completely bare on the bottom that's how much he's worn those socks but they don't fit unfortunately they don't they won't uh, the sock won't go over his ankle at this point because what I failed to take into consideration when I added this here because the last time I've done it for him on his socks um it was just a vanilla pair of socks so what I failed to take into consideration, in addition to this slip stitch pattern here, um, making the fabric tight and not stretchy, all this cabling down the front makes the fabric tight and not stretchy across the instep. So at this particular point here, where I've got the slip stitch at the back and the cabling on the front, the fabric right here is not stretchy at all. Not stretchy enough, anyway, to get over his heel and like you can see there that's, that's really not a lot of give compared to like up here which has a lot more give like that's a lot more give compared to like that doesn't move as much um anyway so it doesn't fit him which is quite sad i don't have any more of this yarn left so even if i ripped back i couldn't knit a bigger size because i wouldn't get the same size sock um which is a shame really because he really liked this color so what my mum did was when she came over she came over last weekend um she brought the socks back to show me and um and then she only let me keep one sock because i said i'll take it with me to new york and see if i can find yarn that matches at vogue to um or something similar to this to uh, knit him another pair of socks because he really likes these i just need to knit him a bigger size um so but she wouldn't give me the whole pair because she wants the socks <laughs> she didn't want me to give them to someone else so she was essentially holding the sock hostage so I would have to give this one back to her because she wouldn't return it to me. So and not that she doesn't have enough socks. Genuinely, she has so many socks. And she was like, but these ones are really nice. I'm like, you already have a pair of these socks. Like this exact pattern, you have a pair. And then um, and she happened to have them with her. And she was like, but these are nicer. <laughs> Only because they haven't been worn. Not because they're any different. They're literally the same socks. Anyway, funny story. I thought you'd appreciate it. Um... <laughs> And then, uh, so what, what else has been going on? layla has been a bit sick lately. This last week, she's had a bit of a cold. Um, it's been going on for, yeah, just, just over a week now. And um, so what that's meant is that she's basically waking up a bit earlier than usual in the mornings. She's now up around 6, 6.15. So, or she has been, um, which basically meant that my mornings, my early mornings where I got like an hour or so to myself to sort of get my head together, do my own thing for a bit before she wakes up, have gone out the window um so yeah which is fine it's fine it's just a phase It'll, it passes and actually this morning she slept in till just after seven so that was good um so i'm hoping that we're past the whole 6 a.m wake ups for a while which is nice um i my 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 another in other news my ball winder slightly broken the actual ball winder is fine but the um this is the bit that clamps to the bottom of the table like the pot to keep it clamped to the table so I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see but um, it's basically broken completely on this side and on this side it's um, starting to it's cracked all the way down there it hasn't quite broken off yet but it's essentially coming apart and I can my ball winder is from Stanwood Needlecraft it's their medium sized one and I can actually buy this little piece as a replacement I can buy it it's only five dollars I could get a replacement piece but then it would cost me $15 to have it shipped to the UK which just sounds crazy to me like it's five dollars and I have to pay three times the price just to get it shipped here so I was just like no no thank you um so Perry <laughs> came up with a fix it's a slightly bulky fix that didn't get screwed in quite properly so it's not level as you can see it goes at an angle it does the job it holds the clamp it clamps it to the table very tightly and it's not going anywhere so it'll do the job for now until i can sort out a replacement situation um yeah so that's my current ball winder situation <laughs> a funny again another little funny story for you guys a little tidbit i thought i'd share um 
so yeah i already mentioned all of our stuff has come back from new york you can see the boxes piled up behind me and um so that's going to be fun to sort through i mean i'm not expecting to get through all of it before we go away just because there's not going to be enough time but at the very least i need to get things at least that side of the room somewhat organized even if they're still in boxes just push to the wall so they're not in the way and um we have a bunch of boxes that are just going to go straight into storage without being opened mainly uh the boxes with like picture frames and stuff in them because we don't have time to deal with that right now but we'll, once we're back from new york and we have a little bit of time we're gonna sort of take a view on what pictures we already have framed and what frames we have and stuff and figure out what's going to go where if we need to change anything um before we hang stuff up um and then yeah so just want to get some stuff sorted some things can like i've got a few boxes of layla's things which i need to organize and put away and like do something with um so like i said i just want at least the boxes to be in the rooms where they're supposed to go the kitchen's been done like we've pretty much organized the kitchen stuff that came back which is nice um and yeah and then so vkl next weekend not this coming weekend but the next weekend it's going to be very knitting live i'm really excited about it i'm quite nervous as well because like i said i've never actually taught a class before formally like this but um but i'm also looking forward to it i, I think i have a fear of public speaking <laughs> i really don't do well with public speaking it's always been something that's been difficult for me i've always been fine with the material like i, I know what i want to talk about and i'm prepared but i always seem to um uh falter a little bit right at the um when it comes to actually doing the talking but i'm hoping because they're relatively small classes it's not like i'm doing a lecture it should be fine <laughs> i hope i hope my nerves don't get the better of me so if you are taking one of my classes and um you you watch this podcast uh, please bear with me <laughs> i'm i'm just a bit nervous so um yeah i'm sure it'll be fine i'm looking forward to seeing friends as well which um, hopefully I'll be able to catch up with quite a few people on this trip even if it's only for a few minutes um, I do really enjoy the social aspect of these sort of get-togethers these sort of fiber events they're really really lovely social events so um, yeah what else have we been up to my mum was over last week she came over she took the day off work on Friday and was here for the day um, it was a good opportunity to just kind of like show her around a little bit get her used to driving our car um sort of getting her up to date on Layla's schedule like where she goes for like different things and stuff um and she knew most of it already but it was just reassuring for me and for her to be able to go over it all properly and um yeah especially because she's been a bit difficult lately with going to bed in the evenings I think it's just because she's ill she's been a bit a bit extra clingy and not wanting to go to bed at night so it's just been a little bit <laughs> difficult for the last week but I think I think we finally cracked it I think we finally passed it um which was another thing i was worried about with leaving as well as if i didn't want her to be too upset but actually one night when my mum was putting her to bed um layla literally was just like didn't want me or perry like we were both in the room and then she she literally was like pushed us away and was just like go go don't want you I'm like okay <laughs> so i think she'll be fine when we're not here um this past weekend as well like i said so my mum had to leave saturday afternoon Saturday evening Perry's dad came round and just basically hung out watched TV whilst we went to the cinema and uh, Layla was asleep and then on Sunday we decided to head down to Scotney Castle. Scotney Castle is just a little um, quite a small castle actually um, about 20 minute drive from where we live and it's a National Trust uh, location I guess. Um, we decided to get National Trust membership last summer because um, we were like oh well, we're going to be living there at the time we knew we we, we were still buying uh the our apartment we hadn't finished yet but we knew we'd, we were going to be moving here so um we were like we'll make use of it there's quite a lot of national trust places around here so we'd definitely get our money's worth so we thought we'd go there i had to take photos of layla's little nugget pullover and the shawl that i recently finished that i can't show you so um we went there and used it as a bit of a location for some photos um <laughs> the photos of nugget came out beautifully for the shawl um i would have liked taking photos in a few other places as well but obviously with layla you we were quite limited as to what we could do and like how much time we could spend just wandering around trying to get photos plus it was quite cold and i didn't want to have to have my coat off for too long so we got a few photos i've got enough to 
do the things I needed it to do to demonstrate the shawl for the pattern. Closer to the time of publishing, I might think about taking some more photos or redoing some photos um, closer to the time, but for now, it serves its purpose. And then, so not this past weekend, the weekend before, I believe it was, yeah, was Josh's first birthday party, so that was really sweet. And um, he's getting so big, and it's just, it was just really fun. Um, and then, oh, yesterday, yesterday evening, I had my first parents' evening. I can't believe that my baby's not even two and I've just been to her first parents evening although I had to sit in one of the tiny little baby kitty chairs that's literally I'm not even kidding this big I have never felt like such a giant before in my life than trying to sit down on one of those little itty bitty kitty chairs um she's doing really well she's doing really well her um, teacher is really happy with her progress her development everything is great um they have literally no concerns which is amazing to hear um, and she's going to be moving up to the next class next next month once she turns two. A bit sad because I really like the class she's in now. She's the class she's in now is like two and under, and the next class is two to three. So she'll be moving up once she turns two. Um, yeah, which is kind of bittersweet because I really like her teacher at the moment. Like her her key teacher is really lovely, and all the teachers are really nice actually. So, and a few of her friends already from the class have moved up because they turned two. So. Um, she'll have a few people she knows when she moves up which is really nice um and then oh another funny nursery story so we got Layla or I say we my mum got Layla a latch board for Christmas it's one of these it's a board that has a bunch of different like latches and locks and stuff on it that they can like it, it helps with their fine motor skills so they learn how to undo them and do them up and stuff um apparently it's been working a bit too well because now she can open the gate at nursery <laughs> so in their classroom other than the main door they have the main door and then they have their coat hooks and stuff and then there's like a little baby gate type gate it's not a traditional baby gate it's more just like a picket fence type gate with like a latch on it and uh the teachers the last couple after christmas were like Layla's learned how to open the gate and we were just like oops i'm sorry that might be our fault um so um so yeah the teacher's like oh i lock the gate and i walk across the room and then i turn around the gates open and Layla's just stood there like this yeah, so now she's staging breakouts at <laughs> nursery. Um, so yeah, thankfully, like I said, she's gonna be moving up soon, so they're not gonna have to deal with it for much longer. The next class up doesn't have like a gate like that, it's just a door. Um, and then, and then yeah, so I think that pretty much covers it. Covers it. I think the last thing, oh, I forgot to mention, I'm also gonna be spending some time at the Primrose Yarn Company booth on Saturday morning, I believe. Um, I can't remember exactly what time I'm going to be there, but it'll probably be, it'll definitely be Saturday morning for an hour or so because um, I'm teaching all afternoon on Saturday, so I'll only really be in the marketplace in the morning. I am planning on visiting the marketplace on Friday afternoon. It opens at five at Vogue. Um, so, so, yeah, that wasn't clear. I'm talking about Vogue now. Um, I will be at the marketplace on the Friday from five um probably for an hour or so and then um i'm not sure i may or may not be meeting up with friends for dinner on friday night um still waiting for plans to be confirmed then saturday i'll be there again in the morning and then from around one o'clock onwards i'll probably go get some lunch and then i've got classes until 8 30 p.m <laughs> pretty much and then again i'll be in the marketplace in the morning probably on sunday for a couple of hours and then i've got a class again and then i'm off in the afternoon um so yeah it's gonna be a busy weekend i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to going away looking forward to seeing friends um but i'm, I'm gonna miss my baby but oh well i'm gonna be vlogging in case you guys didn't realize i will be vlogging the weekend uh or not the weekend the whole trip i'll be vlogging and so there'll be a vlog to look forward to after i get back and followed by a podcast probably in early february at some point but um but yeah i hope you enjoyed this podcast i hope it wasn't too long for you and um and yeah i will see you guys again soon thank you take care i hope you have a lovely week and um yeah bye